Hi everyone, Matteo here. This is a second episode of the Ice Pullover Saga, a series of videos where I will share my progression on finding the best way to make ice pullover coffee, or Japanese style ice coffee, depending on how you like to call it. In the previous video, I shared the first approach and method on how to get a balanced coffee, and which are the important aspects to consider when we make ice pullover coffee. If you missed it, I suggest you to go to check it out. In this episode, we will focus more on how to achieve a higher extraction. As we know, coffee, depending on varietals, processing, and also roasting level, can have a different reaction with the other brewing variables. Meaning that sometimes following a recipe with a certain coffee is not enough to achieve a balanced extraction. When we brew ice pour over coffee, it's even harder because we use less brewing water. So what should we do? The first thing you might think is to grind finer higher contact time, higher contact surface, more extraction. To be honest, I want to avoid that because with ice pour over coffee, we already grind finer than usual. So if we grind even finer, we might increase the chances of having clogging or channeling or even bypass. So my suggestion is to change pouring pattern. I went back to my videos and I got inspiration on my Orea V3 with Kalita paper filter video. I took that method and I adapted it for ice pour over. We're going to keep the same ratio, so 18 grams of coffee, still ground at 22 regular clicks with a Comandante and grinder, brewing water 210 uh, grams plus 90 grams of ice. The 210 grams of brewing water are going to split in 50 grams for the first pour and then four pours of 40 grams each. Now, to increase the solubility of the coffee, we will do a one minute bloom and for the rest of the intervals between pours, we will keep the 40 seconds. Splitting the total water in smaller pours and the longer bloom will increase the extraction. It can increase it so much that we can also reduce the water temperature. In fact, with this method, we will start with a water temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. This will also help to reduce the final temperature even more, so it's a win-win situation. Now, let's brew some coffee, then I will explain how to change variables to make sure that you will get your coffee on the sweet spot. Okay, let's put the coffee in and then we level the coffee bed. I will pour our first 50 grams of water. Perfect. Then I give a bit of swirl to make sure that all the grounds are wet. And then we wait one minute before applying the second pour. As I said, here uh, giving a long uh, bloom, we are going to sure that all the coffee uh, all the particles are well saturated and so when we're going to apply the following pores we are going to extract more solids from the coffee. Also you don't need to worry about losing the temperature because with the urea uh, a lot of temperature is going to stay inside uh, the brewer. And now we're going to apply the next pour. Uh, second pour, 40 grams. And then we're gonna give another swirl to make sure to collect all the uh, ground coffee that might be stuck in the ridges of the Kalita paper. And now we wait until 1 minute 40. And now we apply the third pour, another 40 grams of water. Okay, now we wait until 2 minutes 20. And now the fourth pour another 40 grams of water. Now we give another little swirl to collect all the grounds. And now we wait another 40 seconds. And 
Okay, now we have three minutes, last pour, 40 grams of water. Perfect. A little swirl to collect the grounds. And now we wait until all the coffee is drained. As I said before, with splitting uh, the total amount of water in small pores, we will increase the power of extraction of the water, we will increase a bit of more turbulence, and this will increase the strength and also the extraction. This will help us to extract more sweetness from the coffee that will balance the acidity. And the result is a, a cup that is a more intense and more sweet. Perfect. The end temperature is lower compared to the method used in the previous episode, as I was telling before. Uh, this is because we are using a lower temperature of brewing water. This will help to reduce the dilution of the coffee when we're going to serve it in a glass with more ice. Final TDS percentage is uh, definitely higher compared to the previous method, and this will shift the extraction yield from 18-90% to 21-22%. And that's pretty awesome. During testing different coffees, uh, with a couple of them, I even reached the 24% of extraction yield, and that is a lot. But also, these coffees, they weren't tasting good. Uh, so I get to change some variables to make them taste better. Now it's time for some brewing tips. What to do when the coffee is over extracted. You will notice this because you will feel a, a bitter taste and also a dry sensation in your mouth. Because we grind finer than usual, what you can do is to grind slightly coarser. Uh, this will reduce the contact time and contact surface between coffee and water, resulting in less extraction. But if you see that the flow is actually good and fast, what you can do is to reduce the temperature of the brewing water even more. And that is even better, because uh, the ice will cool down even more the drink, so you will get at the end less dilution. Another thing you can do to reduce extraction is to increase the coffee dose. This will reduce the extraction, but it will increase the strength of the coffee. Then, if you think that is too intense, you can always dilute it more with ice. Now, if the coffee is not extracted enough, what you can do is to increase the water temperature to 93 degrees Celsius, like it was for the previous video. Uh, this will extract more, but you will get the final brew with a few degrees higher. If you notice that when you apply the following pour, uh, there is still some water left in the coffee bed, what you can do is to increase the interval 10 seconds more. Uh, this will help to let the water completely drain the coffee bed before you apply the pour, and the water that you will pour from the kettle will have a higher power of extraction. Instead, if the coffee drains very fast, you can just grind slightly finer. This will fix the problem. These were my tips on how to uh, change variables to make sure that you get your coffee on the sweet spot, but remember, always change one variable at a time. Okay, now back to the coffee. After all the ice in the server is melted, you can pour it in a glass with more ice. I always suggest to place a big piece of ice, if you can, because this will dilute your drink less. And that's all for this second episode. I hope that you will get a good result in case you want to make your ice pour over coffee a bit uh, sweeter and more balanced. And of course, I would appreciate it if you want to share with me your uh, brewing experience and your thoughts about this method. You can easily do it by dropping a comment in the section below. Now, before ending this video, I want to give you a little tease on the next episode. I suggest to get yourself some whiskey stones or metal ice cubes, because we will go even chiller. Thank you very much for watching, I hope to see you in my next videos, and in the meantime I wish you a wonderful day and delicious coffee. Ciao!